I work at the CNRS in France, which stands for the Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique. It's like FASIC in Spain. Um, I work at the institute located in Orléans, which is a small town about one hour south of Paris. My main scientific interest is in the search for radio transients, such as pulsars, fast radio bursts, but also in the detection of SETI, which aims to look for signals from extraterrestrial civilizations. My job is 100% research, uh, which means I don't have obligations to teach or do any other things, um, so I can really set my own agenda of how I spend my research time. Although I do enjoy very much working with students, so I supervise a number of uh, student projects. I also contribute to different aspects of the academic life, for example, serving as the co-chair of the SKA Science Working Group, uh, where I hope to help define the future direction of radio astronomy. I started my scientific career about 14 years ago as a student. I already heard about the square kilometer, the SKA project, and I have been looking forward to working with this, what will be the most sensitive radio telescope ever constructed. I think the SKA is really cool because it's the best science instrument that we will have, but also the fact that it is so international. It's a project of multi-countries that we really bring the world together to build something that will advance our knowledge of the universe. So when the SKA contacted me to be the co-chair of the Cradle of Life Science Working Group in 2022, I did not hesitate and agreed to it immediately. In 2023, I was also invited to join the Science and Engineering Advisory Committee for the SKA, where we meet about three times a year and we hear about the progress of the SKA and we provide um, our expert um, recommendation on the progress. The Cradle of Life Science Working Group of the SKA really cares about the search of the origin of lives. And this is a really broad topic. It includes things like planet formation, for example, the Earth, how it was formed and how life emerged from it, or things like physics and chemistry of young stars, as well as the search for extraterrestrial intelligence um, elsewhere in the universe. And so the science working group of Cradle of Life, I see it as a platform to facilitate the, all these kinds of collaborations. Um, about 10 years ago, there was the um, uh, preparation for the SKA white book. So that was the main activity for the science working group at that time. It was a little bit quiet now, but SK is really starting to be built. A lot of progress is being made. So I think once again, the science working group is playing a major role, um, being a place for the scientists to get ourselves ready for the day when the SKA will become available in the very near future. One of my research interests is in SETI. And what is that about? SETI is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Uh, we look for signal signatures, which are advanced uh, signals from technology of um, extraterrestrial intelligence life. It is analogous to the study of biosignature, where scientists look for molecular lines like water that might show a sign of life. SETI uh, as a community has really grown a lot in the last um, years, uh, a lot thanks to um, support from private donors. Um, and one main example is the Breakthrough Listen Foundation. It is a 10 year, $100 million program in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The main goal of Breakthrough Listen is to study 100 nearby galaxies uh, monitor the galactic plane and also to analyze data from the nearest billion stars. Breakthrough Listen has really provided a lot of opportunity to fund young people to join the field and to contribute to the research as well as to um, uh, support observing program on many of the most sensitive radio telescopes around the world, including parks in Australia, Green Bank in the USA, uh, the Very Large Array, as well as Meerkat in South Africa.
The way we search for a Tegna signature, um, the majority of work has been done in the radial spectrum. And why is that? It's because radial uh, emission is relatively cheap to produce. Just look at ourselves as human technology. We have been using radio telecommunications for decades now, so we might expect any extraterrestrial civilizations to do the same. Radial emission is also uh, one of the few uh, windows that we can uh, that can go through the atmosphere. So, which means we can easily detect it from Earth without having to send um, space uh, satellite detector that cost more money. Then, in radio spectrum, what are we looking for? We think that the most likely signals that we will detect are narrow band drifting signal. Human telecommunication technologies, we have been using filters to concentrate information in a small range of the electromagnetic spectrum. So this is the idea of searching for narrowband signal. It is also very distinguishable from astrophysical signals, which tend to be much more broadband in nature. So what we're talking about, it's like hertz with signal, really, really narrow compared to astrophysical ones. Then we expect these signals to be drifting in time and frequency because imagine that there is this telecommunication from an exoplanet that we detect from Earth and the exoplanet will have a differential acceleration with respect to the motion of our Earth. So we will see the signal drifting in time and frequency. If you talk to any radio astronomer, they will be dreading of this thing called RFI, which is radio frequency interference. These are signals generated by human technologies such as phones or televisions or satellites that astronomers are unfortunately picking up in their, in their observational data that is contaminating the stars, the galaxy that they want to observe, which is so much weaker. We, when we search for SETI signal, basically we are trying to detect RFI from space, the RFI generated by the extraterrestrial intelligence. I think the first kind of techno signature that we will detect, like I explained earlier, will be these narrow band drifting signals. But more importantly, I think it must be a signal that repeats. We cannot just see it once and say that this is um, SETI signal because as Carl Sagan said some, some many years ago, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So we need to be able to see the same signal multiple times in the same location in the sky to be really sure that this is really nothing else, that it is um, real SETI information. I think we will need to coordinate with as many radio telescopes as possible. Everybody looking at this the location, if we can all see it, then it helps to um, be have more confidence that the signal is true. Detecting techno signature, I think, will be one of the most important scientific discoveries of all time. I think it will completely change our perspective as human. I think for a long time, it seems like we are the only living things in the universe. And even on Earth, we human have seen ourselves as the most advanced life form of all. If we detect extraterrestrial intelligence, then they would more likely or most likely be more advanced than us. So what does that mean? And I think studying the fate of the extraterrestrial intelligence will really teach us a lot about our past and importantly, our future, what lies in front of us. Some people say it's a waste of money to look for extraterrestrial intelligence. Now, I remember some years ago in the astronomy department, we had a very interesting discussion at the coffee time where we were wondering, imagine if we can time travel to say 10,000 years later and we can get the answer of one astronomy question. What would it be? And a lot of people ended up deciding that the only thing, the one thing that they want to know is, is there life outside and have we made contact? So I think are we alone is really one of the most profound, mo most profound questions we have. It captures the imagination of not only scientists, but also the general public. Now for people who say it's a waste of money, I think what they are implying is that 
they don't think we'll detect any, any signal anytime soon. And perhaps I don't disagree. Um, in fact, we have only searched for a SETI signal in a very, very small fraction of the sky. So it is possible that there is something out there, but we just, we just haven't had the resources to really look properly. And I think maybe with our current technology, we have not yet the sensitivity to detect these signals from another planet that maybe may or may not be directing to the Earth. But if we don't start looking, we will never find.